All right, pre-calculus, we're going to continue talking about factors in zero and really understand the importance of them. Um, you know, I really want to emphasize the whole idea of what factors are and what zeros are. So let's talk um, about some problems that we've already talked about so far. For example, if I say that x equals 3 is a factor, I'm sorry, is a zero, so that would be a zero. So that means, you know, what is a zero? It means that um, this particular value makes a function zero. And let's say that um, that means its factor is x minus three, okay? And this is linear. We like things to be linear. So we like linear factors. Linear factors have a degree of one, nice and simple. No x squared, no x cubes, x minus three, x, right? So three minus three makes zero. That's why it is a factor. So that would be the factor, okay? Um, and uh, that's really, hopefully, should be fairly easy. You know, if x equals negative 5 is a 0, then that means that x plus 5 is a factor. Why? Because negative 5 plus 5 is 0. But don't forget, we talked about that there's other ways you could give this factor. I, I could put any value out in front of these parentheses and then just distribute it through. So, for example, if I put a 7 there and distributed it through, I would get 7x minus 21. And that would still be a factor because, look, if I turn x into a 3, which which is what it says right here. It says x is 3. 7 times 3 is 21. 21 minus 21 is 0. So that, that would make 7x minus 21 a factor as well. So we also talked about, you know, fractions, like if we had 2 uh, fifths, um, most people would start off with just x minus 2 fifths. You know, that makes a whole lot of sense. 2 fifths minus 2 fifths is 0. But again, dealing with fractions sometimes is uncomfortable. So if we multiply by the denominator of 5, and we'd multiply that through, we get 5x minus 2, which is really nice. You know, again, think about this. If I plug in 2 fifths, 5 times 2 fifths would be 2. 2 minus 2 makes 0. And don't forget the things that, like Chris and Azrae mentioned in class, in terms of why is 5x minus 2 a, a factor? Because if I set it equal to 0, I would add the 2 divide by the 5, I would be back at where I started with x being 2 fifths. I mean, that's why it all connects. It all makes sense. Same thing even with this one. If I set this equal to 0, out of the 21, I get 7x equals 21, divide by the 7, and I get 3. Back to the very beginning of what I said, x equals 3. Um, don't forget, though, that we also sometimes we get these square roots that come up, like, you know, 2 minus the square root of 3. Now, we learned that square roots always come in what we call pairs. Actually, the official name is what we call them as conjugate pairs, meaning that if 2 minus radical 3 is a 0, another one automatically has to be 2 plus radical 3. They always come in pairs. The 2 doesn't change. It's still positive 2 and positive 2. It's the radical that could be negative or positive. So what would those factors look like? Well, I need the x. Factors have the x. Minus 2 plus radical 3. Again, why? Because when I sub this in for x, I need the 2 and the minus 2 to make a 0. And I need the negative radical 3 and the positive radical 3 to make a 0. Likewise, just like we said in class, again, I remember Chris and Azrae mentioning it, that if you set it equal to 0, think about it. You would add the 2 over and you'd subtract the radical 3 over. So you'd add the 2 over and get a 2. You'd subtract the radical 3 over, and you'd be right back to the beginning, 2 minus radical 3. Also, uh, don't forget this other one would be a factor of x minus 2 minus radical 3. Again, because we need the 2 there, so the 2 minus 2 makes 0, and the radical 3, so the radical 3 minus radical 3 makes 0. So hopefully that, that all makes a lot of sense to you guys. Now, let's talk about um, a function that has the following factors, right? It has the factors of x plus 2, and it has the factors of x minus 5, okay? Now, this is what we call factored form, okay? It means it's factored. And when we say when we're factored, that means we have linear factors. We love these linear factors with x to the first, x to the first, no x squares, anything like that. Now, we know that from looking at this, the zeros would be x equals negative 2, because negative 2 plus 2 is 0, or because you could set this equal to 0 and subtract 2, and you get negative 2. And another 0 is x equals 5. Why? Because 5 minus 5 is 0, or you could set this part equal to 0 and add the 5 and get x equals 5. But let's actually go ahead and multiply this out and see what we get. So notice we would multiply. We get x times x is x squared. We go all the way to the back for a negative 5x. Then we come to the middle here. 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So we would get x squared minus 3x minus 10. So this is the, remember, this is the general form right here. This is the general form 
uh, x squared minus 3x minus 10. That's the nice general form. And of course, um, this up here is the factored form. So this value right here has um, zeros, right? This has zeros of negative 2 and 5. And furthermore, if you really want to, again, really prove this to yourself, if you plug in 5, look what happens. 5 squared is 25. Minus 3 times 5 is 15, minus 10. 25 minus 15 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. Hey, what do you know? It all makes sense. And also, negative 2 works. Negative 2 squared is 4. Uh, minus 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, minus 10. 4 minus negative 6 is actually 4 plus 6, which is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. So there's all kinds of convincing evidence that negative 2 and 5 are the zeros, hence the factors are x plus 2 and x minus 5. Okay? Um, let's look at one that has some square roots in it. Okay? So again, let's say that a, um, a uh, factored form looks like this. x minus 2 plus radical 5. And the other one would be x minus 2 minus radical 5. Now, what would the zeros be? Well, again, they would be 2 minus radical 5 and 2 plus radical 5. Again, that's where I'm getting all this from here, right? So if I would set this part right here equal to 0, I would get a add the 2 over and then subtract the 5 and I get 2 minus radical 5. If I did the same thing with this guy right here, I'd add the 2 and then add the radical 5 and get 2 plus radical 5. But let's multiply these together to see how this really does work. Because I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm working backwards to prove to you that these are all zeros and factors make sense. So x times x makes x squared. Then I got to go x times the negative 2 makes negative 2x. And I got to go all the way to the back makes negative x radical 5. Kind of ugly, but watch what's going to happen. Okay, continue on. Now I got to distribute this middle negative 2 here. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2 makes positive 4. And then negative 2 times negative radical 5 makes positive 2 radical 5. Keep going. I got to distribute this one last radical 5 right here. So radical 5 times x is x radical 5. Radical 5 times negative 2 is negative 2 radical 5. And one more to go here. Radical 5 times negative radical 5. Well, a negative and a positive makes a negative. And radical 5 times radical 5 is actually radical 25, which is just 5. And we've learned that, right? A radical 5 times radical 5 is just 5. Um, now, if you do this right, every time you do this, anything with a radical will cancel. So it works out. Look at this. The negative radical x radical 5 and the positive x radical 5 cancel. The 2 radical 5 and the negative 2 radical 5 cancel. So all those radicals cancel, and that will always happen if you do the problem correctly. All right, let's see here. So let's combine like terms. The negative 2x and negative 2x makes a negative 4x. And the 4 and the minus 5 makes a negative 1. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is that this innocent looking general quadratic right here has these as its factors, which aren't the prettiest things in the world, and these right here as its zeros. Okay? And I want to really prove this to you. So I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula to really prove this to you that this all does work out. Okay, the opposite of b is 4. Plus or minus b squared would be 16 minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 1. All divided by twice a is 2. That's x equals 4 plus or minus, let's see here, uh, 4 times 1 times negative 1 is actually negative 4. So I get 16 minus negative 4, which turns into a plus. That actually makes a 20 in there, all divided by 2. 20 could be reduced. 20 would be uh, 4 times 5, and the 4 comes out as a 2, so I get 2 radical 5, all divided by 2. And everything has to be divided by 2, so 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then I get the radical 5 there, or 1, you could put the 1 right here if you want to, 1 radical 5. So notice, I get 2 plus radical 5, 2 minus radical 5, exactly what I got in the very, very beginning from my zeros and factors. So it all makes sense, okay? It all comes full circle and really makes a lot of sense. Now, what we're going to work on next is what happens if you know one factor, but you're not quite sure of the other. For example, Let's say here's a function. Uh, let's say it's x squared minus x minus 20. Okay. Now, maybe you know how to factor this. You know you can use the quadratic formula and get the answer right away. But I just want to kind of teach you something here real quick. Let's say that I tell you one of the factors, one of the factors is known to be x minus 5. I'm telling you that's one of the factors. 
um, x minus 5, which means that the 0 would be x equals 5, right? So that's something that I already know. Now, this is a quadratic, which means there's going to be two factors. This means there's going to be two zeros. So I have to find the other one. And I can find the other one doing a process called synthetic division. Now, it's division. So let's do a quick little side lesson right here. If you, if I told you, hey, you got the number 10, and I told you 2 was one of the factors, how would you find another one? Well, I'm assuming everybody would know 5, but I want to teach you why, right? Because if I took 10 and divided it by 2, one of the factors I gave you, you would get the other factor of 5. Hence, 2 times 5 makes 10. Same thing, if I told you that one of the factors of 24 was 6, one of them was 6, you would take the 24 and divide by 6 to get the other factor. 18, hey, one of the factors is 3. So you divide by it, and you get the other factor of 6. So if you want to find the other factor, take the x squared minus x minus 20, and just like you would with regular numbers, you're going to divide it by the factor that you know, x minus 5. So I'm going to divide it by the factor I know, and what I'm going to be left with is the other factor that I don't know yet. I'm going to be left with the other factor, just like 10 divided by 2 gave me the other factor, 24 divided by 6 gave me the other factor. So we're going to do a process called synthetic division. It's really easy and I think kind of fun. You make a kind of like an upside down division bar, or you make this kind of half box kind of thing here. And you need the coefficients of the numerator. You need the coefficients of your original function. The coefficients would be the 1 in front of the x squared, the negative 1 in front of the x, and the negative 20 in the back. And you always need to have all of your coefficients, okay? So negative or 1, negative 1, negative 20. Outside here goes the zero of the known factor, the zero of what you're dividing by, the zero that you know, and that would be 5, okay? You don't do negative 5. That x minus 5 is the factor. You need the zero, which would be 5. And then we're going to do something called synthetic division, okay? This is division, okay? Here's what happens. You drop down the 1, and don't tell me you've never done this before. I know you did this in Algebra 2. But we just need to review it. Drop down the 1, and you do 5 times 1 is 5, and that result goes here then you always add the columns together. So I'm going to add negative 1 plus 5 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. Add the columns, you get a 0. Now I'm done. There's nowhere else to go. This last number here at the very end is the remainder. And I want to have a remainder of 0. Having a remainder of 0 tells me that I'm a factor, right? Because don't factors make you 0? I mean, 2 goes into 10 5 times with no remainder. 6 goes into 24 4 times with no remainder. So what I'm telling you is x minus 5 goes into this, this value, this, this function, with no remainder, which is a good thing. So I had a quadratic. I started with a quadratic, and I broke it down to a linear. So this represents, this 1 and 4 represent 1x plus 4. And that is my other factor. That's what I'm left with. So that was the missing factor. That missing factor I didn't know, I now know. So that missing factor was x plus 4. Okay? So that means the other factor is x plus 4, and the other 0 would be x equals negative 4. Okay? And if you really want me to prove it, like here, you know, how do you know this is a factor? How do you know 5 is a factor? Because 2 times 5 is 10. 6 times 4 is 24. 3 times 6 is 18. Same thing, x minus 5 times x plus 4. If I multiply them, I should get the original value that I gave you, the original function I gave you. And you do. You get x squared. You get a 4x. You get a negative 5x. You get a negative 20. And then you get x squared minus x minus 20, which was the original problem. So this idea of synthetic division allows you to find other factors, okay? So we're trying to make factoring easier so you can find other factors. Let's do another example here. Um, and I'm going to make this one a little bit tougher, okay? So um, we all know that there's some, some factoring problems that we're just, you know, not very good with, for example, you know, that we just struggle with for some reason. Um, so I want to give you an example of that. So here's a function. Uh, it is uh, 3x squared plus 22x plus 7. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the factors is x plus 7. That's one of the factors, okay? That means one of the zeros is negative 7. Why? Because negative 7 makes 0. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to find the other factor. I want to find the other one. And just like, you know, let's go back to that whole division thing again. If I told you 
that, uh, you know, I said, hey, you know, 4 is one of the factors of 20. What's the other one? Well, you would do 20 divided by 4, and you'd get 5. Oh, there's the other one, because 4 times 5 makes 20. I got it. So what I want to do is I want to take this function, 3x squared plus 22x plus 7, and I want to divide it by the known factor, x plus 7, to help me find the other factor. So I'm going to use this thing called synthetic division, okay? I need my coefficients 3, 22, and 7, and I need the 0 on the outside, that 0 is negative 7, again, that's the 0 from what is known, right, and I'm going to drop down the 3, always just drop it down, or you can think, add that column, and 3 and 0 is 3, multiply negative 7 times 3 is negative 21, add those columns together, and you get a positive 1, negative 3 times, or negative 1, I'm um, sorry, negative 7 times 1 is negative 7, and I get 0, that's a good thing, that's my remainder, that last number better be zero because it just proves that negative seven is a zero. It proves it. So I had a quadratic. I now went from a second degree to a first degree. So this represents three x plus one. So that means my remaining factor is three x plus one. I had the factor given to me was x plus seven. I just wanted to prove to you that these are the factors. They need to multiply to get that original polynomial. Let me just prove it to you. Three x squared. On the outsides, I get a 21x. On the inside, I get a 1x. And on the last, I get a 7. And add those middle terms together, I do, in fact, get a 22x plus 7. So I do know for sure that these two factors multiply to make this, just like 4 times 5 multiplies to get 20. So what's my other 0? Then I already knew one of the zeros was negative 7. The other 0 would be 3x plus 1, set it equal to 0, subtract the 1 divide by the 3, and I get negative 1 third as my other 0. So um, my two factors are 3x plus 1 and x plus 7. The other um, 0 is uh, uh, I had negative 7 originally, and then x equals um, negative 1 third. So, oh, sorry about that. So um, that's the whole idea of what we're going to be working on next, is I'm going to give you some factors. I'm going to give you some, um, some functions, and I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you one of the factors, and we just have to use this thing called synthetic division, which is really just addition and multiplication um, to help us find the other factor. So um, we're going to keep practicing more at this. Hopefully it makes a lot of sense. Hopefully watching this short little 20-minute video helped you out, and we'll do a lot more class on Friday. All right, have a good one, guys.